Happy Thursday. Um, I am ready to get started. I hope you are too. Um, I cannot believe that it just seems like that these days are going and going and going. Um, it's like one long continuous day, not, not being broken up by going to school and um, having uh, different events to go to and things to do at home. So um, I have really enjoy doing these every afternoon because it gives me something at a set time to work on with you guys. So what you need today, you just need paper and pencil today. That's it. And uh, we are going to focus on something that I have not talked to you really a lot about yet. Although, well, I have talked about them, but not focused an entire lesson on differentiating between the two of these. And to differentiate means to figure out, obviously it sounds like differences, to be able to determine, to be able to tell one versus the other pretty easily. And teaching third grade like I do, usually about the time of third grade, it's pretty easy. You know, boys and girls are starting to kind of be able to tell the difference between these things um, on a normal day and a normal lesson. But it is important that we continue to review them so we don't lose that prior knowledge we have in here. Today's fact and opinion. And um, we are going to focus on this using a nonfiction text, it is probably easiest to um, use fact and opinion with nonfiction because fact obviously means something that can be proven. So I'm going to write that here on my board back here. I have to move my author's purpose here. Um, let's just remember that today, if we're using a nonfiction text, it's going to be probably the main author's purpose is going to be to inform us about some information, maybe a little entertaining, depending on what it is. And I think today um, the secondary author's purpose would definitely be to entertain us because it's going to be some, uh, you know, we're going to learn some nonfiction facts about some things that we definitely are going to enjoy probably reading about, make us uh, smile. And we'll see that here in just a minute, what it is I'm going to share with you today. So uh, to get a little bit of a background for us here, fact, these are, these are things or facts, I should say more than one, rewrite that so it's a little neater. Facts, boys and girls, are things that can be proven. Things that have hard evidence that can be proven. can be proven true. I almost spelled, misspelled true. Okay, so fact would be, a synonym for that would be truth, um, something that absolutely can be proven. So an opinion, And I have talked to you about forming what I call valid opinions, ones that can be maybe supported with some fact, ones that have some good, if I want to say the term meat to them, you want a piece, you know, if you are eating, let's say a pork chop, you don't want a pork chop that just has fat and bone to it. You want something that has some good meat to it so that it fills your belly, it gives you that protein that you need, right? Right. So you want an opinion, you want opinions, since we have facts up here, I'm gonna put opinions down here, make it plural. You want opinions to be things that can uh, be supported and are valid. You want to be able to form a personal idea. So opinions 
our personal feelings. Whoops. I am struggling today writing, aren't I? I was almost wrote feedings. Personal feelings and ideas that can be supported if valid. Okay. So let me tilt that down so that you can write that down if you need to. So I would suggest you write that this down on a piece of paper if you need to go back after my lesson and pause it, pause the video here so that you can copy it down, please do so. Um, that way you can keep it as maybe a little cheat sheet for you in the future, like our author's, author's purpose um, pie chart is that we made so that you can keep it with you and you can continue to learn from this and keep the definition fresh in your mind. But what we're gonna focus on today, this part for nonfiction text, it's not horribly hard to do. It's just finding information, right there information. I can touch it, I can write it down. Opinions are the things that are a little bit harder when we are trying to support it with fact and make sure that it makes sense with the text that we are learning about today. So again, it's really important that we take what we have. We don't just focus on what the surface, like here on the palm of my hand, we dive deeper. We dive in between our fingers. We get all around if we're pretending like my hand is the text, we're getting all around it and inside of it too, to make sure that we are understanding and truly comprehending what it is that we need to comprehend with fact and opinion. So, ready to get started, ready to show you the text. And the reason why I said that, obviously, for a nonfiction text, the, the main um, author's purpose is going to be to inform us, but I said this one is probably, or I'm not going to read this entire book because as you could see, it is quite thick. I am only going to read a few pages out of it to you. This is going to be entertaining to you also. So the text I'm reading today, it is from National Geographic Kids and it's 125 true stories of amazing animals. So if it's a true story, it is all fact. This entire book is informational text that is based with fact. And it says inspiring tales of animal friendship and four-legged heroes plus crazy animal instincts. So this is all, these are, this is from the year 2012. So obviously there have been other interesting things that have happened in the past eight years, but these were true things that um, Scholastic, the publisher and National Geographic Kids put together to show sometimes that animals were doing some pretty amazing things. So now I am going to turn to the middle of the book and it says reader's choice, animal friends. Seven Amazing Animal Friends. So we are going to read to find out about some unlikely pairings of friends that show, and, and, and animals are very good in showing us and teaching us lessons that you can be friends with people that are different than you, because every one of these partnerships, every one of these friendship pairs out of these seven we're going to look like, are different animals. Ones that you would think, well, I wouldn't think that they could be, that those two could be best friends, but they are. So just because, again, someone is different than you. I talked about that on Friday when I read the Patricia Polacco text to you about um, Chicken Sunday. And I shared with you that Patricia grew up Jewish, but her best friends, next door neighbors, were both Baptists they celebrated different holidays around the springtime, Easter and Passover, but they still appreciated each other's differences. She was white or Caucasian. They were African-American. They were best friends. She said she considered them her brothers and is still close to them today. 
So that proves right here, that story and these stories prove just because someone is different doesn't mean that they are bad, or he or she is bad. You've got to give people a chance. So um, before I get started, we know with a nonfiction text, I always like to look at my uh, picture, find any picture captions. So it says cats and dogs living together. And look at where this is, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens in Ohio. And where I live, that's only about an hour and a half from here. So I have been to the Cincinnati Zoo more than once. It's a wonderful zoo. And if you have not been doing this, the Cincinnati Zoo right now during this coronavirus, while they're closed, they have been doing a daily at three o'clock Facebook live event where you get to do kind of a virtual field trip and get up and close and personal with one um, set of their animals. They have already done they have a cheetah cub. This is a formal, former pair that they had, this dog and, and cheetah. They have another cheetah cub and who is, I think, about eight or nine months and a puppy that's about eight or nine months. And they are best friends. So they did one of their field trips on their pair right now. Maybe you should go look that up and check those out every day. They're on Facebook and on YouTube. They're really neat. So it says, like humans, animals take care of each other. Sometimes it doesn't matter if they're different species. These stories prove that friendship comes in all shapes and sizes. Okay, so cats and dogs living together. Sahara, a cheetah cub, hissed as she faced Alexa, the Antalian shepherd puppy, for the first time. The Antalian is a Turkish dog bred to protect goats and sheep from predators such as cheetahs. It was important that Sahara and Alexa became friends, though. Alyssa Knights, manager of, the, manager of the zoo's cat ambassador program, one of the two young animals in school presentations to teach U.S. students about the Cheetah Conservation Fund, also called the CCF. In Namibia and Southern Africa, farmers don't want cheetahs around because they're concerned that the cats will kill their livestock. The CCF raises Antilians and gives them to farmers to use as guard dogs. The cats just run away when the dogs bark. Knights was wondering what would happen between Sahara and Alexa when suddenly her pet dog, Bailey, intervened. Snatching up a long braided rope, Bailey stuffed the toy into Alexa's open mouth. Then he picked up the other end and took it to Sahara. She grabbed hold. The animals played tug of war and a lasting friendship began. After that, Sahara and Alexa lived together at the zoo. Sahara regularly licks Alexa, who enjoys the affection. They sleep, play, and visit schools together. They worked out their differences, said Knights. I know it's thanks to Bailey. So here they are. At first, they weren't sure of each other, but then her dog said, uh, no, you play here, you play here, now you play together. And there they are, best friends. Orinda, California, a quacky friendship. Look at that, it's a duck and a bunny. <laughs> what the, who would have ever thought? Nobody expected Simon the duck to lay an egg. Simon was supposed to be a he and not a she. You know, she's only lay eggs. He's ducked. But her owner, Jenny McGuire, got an even bigger surprise. Sitting atop Simon Egg trying to hatch it was Simon's best buddy, Snickers the rabbit. Simon and Snickers met as classroom pets. Snickers spends his day herding his duck friend between McGuire's, McGuire's front yard and the back. If Snickers jumps out of sight, the duck quacks at the top of her lungs. When Snickers hears her, he comes hopping, McGuire says. At night, they snuggle in a high hay field bed. Once, Simon had to go to the veterinarian's office for an overnight stay, but she missed her rabbit friend so much that she wouldn't stop quacking. She only stopped when McGuire finally brought Snickers to the clinic to spend the night, too. Simon must know that some bunny loves her. Get it? Some bunny? <laughs> Okay, so we got a couple on this page. Dog protects goat in Buckfastly, England, which is in the United Kingdom. So here we have another dog and a little baby goat. When Lily the goat arrived at Pennywell Farm after her mother abandoned her, humans weren't the only ones who cared for her. Billy the boxer did too. 
Like an adoptive dad, Billy made sure Lily kept her coat and muzzle clean by softly leaking, licking the milk the goat spilled on herself during bottle feedings. Later, after the two playfully chased each other and it was time to go inside, Billy would gently nudge Lily's bottom if she dawdled. To dawdle means to play around and not get down to business and go where she needs to go. When Billy leaped onto the sofa to watch TV, Lily sprang up right next to him. It's like Lily has her own personal watchdog, owner Chris Murray says. <laughs> the bottom, cat plays with a marten. And a marten, boys and girls, is like a weasel. So we have a kitty or a weasel or a ferret. Ferrets are types of weasels. A marten is another um, animal in that family, similar to a ferret. This is in Door, Germany. After a mechanic discovered a marten, a weasel-like animal, under a car's hood, the fuzzy fellow had no place to go. Luckily, photographer Lothar Linz adopted him, and so did Linz's cat, Quarky. Quarky and the marten, named Bub Bub, are now inseparable because they spend their days scampering up trees, climbing perches, and playing tag. That is, until the pals tire out. Then they curl up in a tiny box for a nap till they're ready to play some more. Says Linz, you hardly ever see one without the other. Hmm? Look at him kissing. Okay, we got two more pages here. Oh, here's another kitty. Kitties can be very sweet, can't they? I love my kitty. A orangutan keeps a pet cat. And remember how I said I did a lesson using a text on orangutans um, a couple weeks ago? I said that animal is often mispronounced. A lot of people want to call it an orangutan with a G on the end. It is not. It is actually an orangutan. So prior knowledge, put it in your brain. It's an orangutan. An orangutan and a pet cat. And that is in Panama City Beach, Florida, right here in the U.S. It says, Tonda the orangutan was sad when her mate went away. Mate is another word for her boyfriend. She even lost interest in painting one of her favorite hobbies. Then her keepers introduced her to a cat named TK. And suddenly the ape was back to her old self. Tonda carried TK all over the place, says Stephanie Willard of Zoo World. She gave him food, stroked him, and dangled toys for him to play with. The orangutan even color covered TK's eyes when the ape got her shots so the cat wouldn't be afraid. So maybe Tonda is afraid of shots. But she said, oh, I don't want you afraid, so she covered her eyes. That's very human-like, isn't it? We, as humans, are technically part of the ape world. We are part of that mammal branch. So orangutans have very similar mannerisms, meaning they have thought processes and they do things like what maybe cover eyes if, if someone gets scared, like humans do. Tonda wouldn't come into her enclosure at night until TK was there too. The cat even inspired Tonda to start painting again. Oh, and I forgot this little picture caption right here. We have to read those because I said 90% of the time they give us more information. The word orangutan comes from two words in Asian languages. Orang meaning man and utan meaning of the forest. So orangutan literally translates to man of the forest. Snout out. Come on, Fred, show these dogs you're no porker. We got dogs and a pig. <laughs> it says Cambridge, Ontario, which is a province in Canada. Ontario, if you've ever heard of the city of Toronto, maybe you've heard of the Toronto Raptors, the NBA team that has won the uh, NBA finals before. They are... Um, that city is located in Ontario. And Toronto is not very far from the United States. Um, it's, in fact, it borders New York, that part of the country. So this town, not too far from the U.S. Great Danes were once bred to hunt wild pigs, not befriend them. And even though Fred the pot belly pig isn't exactly wild, the 40-pound porker and his 150-pound pooch pal, Earl, still make a very odd couple. Earl is Fred's bodyguard, says the, their owner, Carol Lawrence. 
If they come across an unfamiliar dog, Earl will put himself between the dog and Fred to make sure that Fred is in no danger. The two friends sleep in the same room and when that pig goes outside, Earl follows to graze behind him in the grass. But only, but they only do that when they finished eating their kibble and yogurt meal. So they even eat together. So it looks like maybe they have some other friends too, but here is the Great Dane, one of the largest dog breeds, and the pig. And the last one is here. Oh, look how sweet. This is in Niedersachsen, Germany. It says, I see you got the text to wear brown today. A rabbit builds a bed for a deer. So a deer and a rabbit are friends. After her mother was struck by a card, Finchin the fawn, a fawn we know is a, is a um, child deer, was brought to live on a farm. One day she, as she grazed, a wild rabbit appeared and it's been by Finchin's side ever since. I've watched them alert each other to hazards or predators so they can flee to safety, says Tanya Ascani, who photographed the pair. But Finchin and her rabbit friend seemed to be more than each other's protectors. The rabbit must have realized that Finchin was too big to sleep underground because the bunny built a grassy nest that was big enough for them both to curl up on. They're like a real live Bambi and Thumper. How precious. Bambi and Thumper. So the rabbit says, well, you can't get underground where I would normally live. So instead, I'm going to build us a little nest up here so we can lay together. Isn't that sweet? So that shows that these animals are actively thinking about each other. One is doing something for the other. So now, again, I'm going to leave this text right next to me because if I need to go back and review it, I'm going to. It's okay if I need to do that. It's what good readers do. They go back to reread. You need to know that. You need to be doing it by now. So, before I get started, let's look one more time at our facts and opinions. Make sure that we remember, move my mouse here, uh, make sure we remember what that means. So, facts are things with hard evidence that can be proven true. We could touch it. Here's a fact. And opinions, personal feelings, ideas that can be supportive if they're valid. So in this text here, we need to make sure that we're forming opinions and, and probably an invalid opinion would be animals can never be friends. That's invalid. Invalid means it's not true. It can't be proven. Did any of these, did any of these stories, the seven little mini um, texts that I read you here, say that these animals hated each other? No, they were friends. Now we know some, in, some animals may be predator and prey, some animals may not get along, but oftentimes animals want to be around other animals like we do because we are animals. So now to get started, I'm going to make a T-chart. And we have done that before, a T-chart is Literally called a T-chart because we make a big T. <laughs> there it is. So on one side, I'm going to write facts. On the other side, I'm going to write opinions. So I probably am going to, and if I was doing this with my class, I would probably be focusing, okay, let's focus on some facts and then let's go to opinions. So I'm going to probably start on facts here, go through, find some um, specific information. So here's one about the orangutan and the pet cat. So a fact right here, the orangutan covered the cat's eyes when the orangutan was getting shot so the cat wouldn't be scared. So that's a fact. The orangutan covered the cat's eyes. Who owns the eyes? The cat does, so it's apostrophe S. The orangutan covered the cat's eyes. 
So the shots would not scare her. Okay, number two. I'm just going to put a kind of a line there so I could see the, the separation. Um, flipping through here. Oh, one thing I thought was super sweet. The wild rabbit made the fawn in a grass nest so they could sit together. Okay, the rabbit made the fawn a grass nest so they could sit together. That's a fact. I can go in, I can touch it in my, in my book here. There are so many facts. We could be sitting here doing this all day, but I'm, I'm going to write four, I think, to get started. Um, what else was something sweet that we read here? Oh. The dog and the goat. Remember that? It said that the dog would um, clean the baby goat after she ate her milk. So she would lick, or it was a male dog, he would lick her muzzle and her chest to make sure that she stayed clean. So the dog cleaned the baby goat after it ate. Tilt this down a little bit so that you can read it. And then another thing that we can read up oh, the cheat and the dog. Let's go back to that here. So we can say um, a cheetah and dog became best friends so that they could go into schools to teach. Or a cheetah and dog worked together to teach boys and girls about conservation. Racer there. Conservation is a big word. All right. So I said a cheetah and dog work together to. Oh, I forgot the word teach. A cheetah and dog work together to teach children about conservation. So here are facts. They are right here. I can touch them in my nonfiction text. So if you need to go back and look at those, you can. So now I'm going to look at opinions. And these boys and girls, these are the ones we have to think about. This is taking the text. This is your surface level. This is taking it a step further and forming ideas on your own about the text. So I'm going to think of a valid opinion about this text. And I can't just say animal friends are cute. Well, what does that really tell me? So I need to really be thinking about what a good valid opinion with this could be. So let's look at the cat and the Martin. Remember I said a Martin was a weasel. Um, so they spend their time curled up together. They like to nap. So I'm going to say, I think the cat and the Martin are friends. I think that's a clue for an opinion. I think the cat and the Martin are friends, maybe because they're about the same size and they look similar, maybe that's why 
they decided to become friends because they saw similarities in each other. Number one, I think, whoop, I'm at it again. Feels like my brain and my hand aren't working together today. They need to get with the program. I think the cat and Martin are friends because they look similar. There's an opinion. Um, here's the bunny and the duck. Quacky friendship. Whoops. So let's see if there's something we can come up with here. Uh, oh, so Simon, the one time she went to the vet and she wouldn't settle down until Snickers, the bunny, came too. So we can say, um, Simon, what do we think about Simon and, and Snickers, the rabbit? Why are they, you know, why would, why would Simon not settle down? Well, I think, you know, it says that she, you know, probably missed her friend. So maybe we can say, I think, or I believe, those are keywords for opinions. I believe Snickers calms down Simon when she gets scared. Now you might say, well, that's very similar to a fact. You know, we, we know it happened, but if I use the word, I believe, then it changes it into an opinion. I believe Snickers is very calming because she helped Simon. I believe Snickers is very calming. There is my opinion. Because she helped Simon is my ba my backing it up with a fact. She helped Simon probably because I think she's calming. Okay, let's come up with another opinion. Well, I'm looking here and oh, I haven't done anything yet with the snout out, the pig and the, and the Great Dane. Um, so why do I think that they are friends? Well, maybe because the, the Great Dane is so big, I think he protects, uh, what's the, what are their names? I don't remember. Earl and um, Fred. So I think Earl I think Earl protects uh, Fred because he is big. There's my opinion. I think Fred, or I think Earl protects Fred because he's big. We don't know for certain. It's a possibility. It could be a valid opinion. This is my opinion. I think that's why he does it. And let's do one more good opinion here. Um, I'm going to go back to the orangutan and the cat because I love that picture. <laughs> um, let's see. What could I say? She gave him food, stroked him, dangled toys for him to play with. Uh, the orangutan playing with TK the cat. So I could say... The orangutan maybe thinks the cat is her baby. Uh, 
I think the orangutan believes the cat is her baby because she loves it. So I said, I think the orangutan believes the cat is her baby because she loves it. She plays with it. She holds it. She protects it. If she doesn't want it to get scared, she cuddles with it. She, she feeds the kitty. So I think that we as humans often do things like that too with our pets. We often treat them as our own children, regardless of the age that we are. It gives us something to take care of. We want to. We want to nurture something else. We want to love on something else. I do that with my kitty all the time. And sometimes I think my kitty does that with me too. Sometimes I'll be holding her and she will be licking and cleaning my arm and hand and like she would with a kitten of herself. So she is cleaning me, making sure that I am taken care of too and showing that she loves me. So facts, easy to find, especially in a nonfiction text. You just write some things down. Opinions, if you're forming a valid opinion with information to support it, you need to really think about that text. I think they're friends, maybe because they look similar. I think Snickers is calming because she helps Simon. I think Earl is protective because he's so big. And I think the orangutan believes the cat is her baby because of how she loves it and nurtures it. So there's my lesson for today. Uh, thank you for joining me, watching this. Please share away. I still am, am doing these. I say if it helps one or two boys and girls a day on Facebook or YouTube, I want to continue to do that. So I will do these until further notice, definitely until at least the end of the school year, the end of May. So um, I will see you tomorrow for Friday. We're already almost through another week. So until then, mwah, two little poodles, goodbye. Work on fact and opinion yourself. Do one for yourself. You can do it.